looks kind of cool. Yeah. Here, uh, you can shoot it if you want. About three years ago, we ran a video asking what is the ultimate urban AR-15. No one better to interview than Clint Smith, founder, lord of Thunder Ranch, the man behind the famous urban rifle course he's been teaching for 40 years. It's really a question as to what would be a good jack-of-all-trades type rifle, good from five yards to 500 yards for urban defense. So you, in your world, need to own with your car, length of your car, farthest distance you can see in your house, and everything else after that is gravy. And I would say that you should be able to hit stuff, okay, on a five foot, eight inch man, okay, you should be able to hit them someplace out to 300 yards. Clint Smith himself, huge proponent of a 16 inch barrel AR-15 for a number of reasons. Either you can get a 14 whatever inch barrel with a muzzle device pinned and welded, or just a 16 inch barrel gun. One, shortest barrel length you can get away with without having to get an SBR tax stamp, so there's going to be fewer legal issues. Second, even if you did go shorter, there are a lot of good reasons not to. The 5.56 round is half the weight of a 9mm round, so like the turbo hobos that live under the I-10 overpass, it derives its power from speed. Fragmentation can be devastating from the 223 round, even if it's just a Zesty 22. However, the round generally has to be going faster than 2,500 feet per second to get that proper fragmentation. An AR-15 with a 10-inch barrel will only reliably fragment in about the first 50 yards, but your fragmentation range extends out to almost 200 yards when you go to 16 inches. Not to mention that additional velocity gives you additional maximum range. At 450 yards, a 16-inch gun is already shooting about a foot higher than a 10-inch rifle. Add an LPVO, low-power variable optic, and you can reliably make hits on a man-sized target with a 16-inch gun at 500, 600, 700 yards. Do it at Thunder Ranch all the time. Yeah, the gun's going to be longer and it's going to be a little bit heavier, but using a 16-inch barrel in tight quarters isn't exactly difficult. In the first Ultimate Urban AR-15 video that we shot, I used an Aero AR-15 with a stainless ballistic advantage 16-inch barrel. The upper plus a good bolt carrier going to run about 650 bucks, 300 bucks for a complete lower with good furniture, another 100 bucks for a good trigger, maybe 14 1500 bucks for a 1 to 6x voodoo and a mount and 100 bucks for a blue force gear sling and hardware call it 2700 bucks or so for the complete setup 2500 to 3 grand and you've got a pretty good rifle now i know i'm going to get murdered by the jag aka the just as good gang for saying this but i would call that first 2500 3 grand aero build like a mid high level setup we're going to spend a lot more today so psa fanboys Take a sedative and buckle up, buddy. We're going to take the same formula from the first video, refine it a bit, plus we're going to throw a suppressor into the mix because no one wants to go deaf defending themselves. Important considerations for a good AR-15 build. Reliability, durability, accuracy. And you can have all three if you want it. All it takes, a little search engine skills, a little paperwork, maybe an ass load of money like five grand for this video i went with a daniel defense ddm4 v7 their flagship gun and i went with deep woods green because i'm james reeves i'm from florida i like green guns and i despise shallow woods just like my beretta 1301 something about green guns makes me a little tight in the pants i don't know why as i have proven on tfb tv before you can get great accuracy with cheap guns if that's all you're looking for i've got a 450 dollars dpms rifle that i've shown you getting 1.6 inch groups at 100 yards with a cheap optic and a stock trigger. The 75 grain Hornady black boat tail. 1.64 inches was the best group. Pretty good out of a $450 AR. I've squeezed tighter than one and a quarter inch groups at 100 yards with Daniel Defense rifles and off the shelf varmint ammunition. This is again the federal varmint and predator. This stuff is just so good for some reason. Less than one and a half inches, outer edge to outer edge, that means you subtract 0.224, and that gets you at about 1.25 inches, five shot group, really strong. This makes sense because the DDM-4 uses a cold hammer forged barrel and chamber, which is not common in the AR-15. And even manufacturers who use cold hammer forged barrels will usually drill out the chamber. 
Cold hammer forging is a process of shaping steel into a barrel, almost like working clay. While hammer forging doesn't necessarily guarantee better accuracy, it wouldn't be uncommon for a hammer forged barrel to be better than your common button rifle barrel in terms of accuracy. But the real draw is durability. It's commonly accepted that you're gonna get about double the barrel life with a cold hammer forge barrel, say, roughly 10,000 rounds versus roughly 20,000 or more rounds with accuracy being more consistent over that lifespan. I also love Daniel Defense's handguards. The MFR on the V7 is wonderful, and the heavy-duty RIS rail has been trusted by U.S. Special Forces for years now. Relatedly, say what you will about using military contracts as a basis for judging the quality of a manufacturer, but Daniel Defense has over 200 contracts with military and federal law enforcement, many of those being with NSWC Crane, which typically means that the SEALs are the end users. That includes a $9 million contract to supply barrels to Crane. That is a decent endorsement. Now let's talk about indecent endorsements. My personal experiences, I have tested at least five Daniel Defense Rifles for TFB TV. Absolutely beating the piss out of these guns. I'm surprised they still send me stuff to review. Two of them in particular, Ryan and I literally tried to break. And even though they're tough, they are lightweight as well, with the standard versions weighing in at a mere 6.2 pounds with a full-length handguard. That's lighter than an M4 carbine with plastic carbine furniture. DD isn't cheap, but it does hit that trifecta of durable, reliable, and accurate while being lightweight too. Dollar for dollar, there could be better deals out there. Arrow comes to mind. Great performance to price brand. But I can say after years of experience with them, Daniel Defense, I think, makes possibly the best AR-15 you can buy. And they kind of should at nearly two grand a pop, right? You're already in for two grand. But wait, there's more, obviously. Accessories. Now let's talk about the Daniel Defense factory stock and grip, a bit like country music. Some people love it, some people hate it, but neither group realizes how irrelevant it truly is. I don't love it, I don't hate it, but I installed a Magpul stock and grip anyways. Magpul, the Dolly Parton of furniture while we're on country music. Everyone likes it and it looks great. Now if only my MOE SL came with rhinestones and giant triple D hooters. Now we're talking. Triggers are of course very important too. I only buy the LaRue MBT trigger as in my opinion, it's the best AR-15 upgrade for the money. Get that dropped in, you can find them for like 80 bucks. They perform as well as anything else in my opinion. I swapped out the already pretty decent Daniel Defense charging handle with Silencer Co.'s new gas-defeating charging handle that prevents suppressor blowback from getting in your face, allegedly. As an aside, after I got this charging handle, I've actually seen more than a few complaints about people ripping the wings off the back of these charging handles. So even though the Psycho did a great job of redirecting gas for me, it's probably not as robust as the stock Daniel Defense charging handle, which is pretty beefy. I'd probably go with a Radian, a Bravo company, or a Breach if you're gonna change it from stock. Now, while we're talking about suppressors, I think a 30 cal suppressor is a prudent investment for any serious AR-15 owner. If you're only going to own 223s, we've tested and proven in prior videos that dedicated 223 caliber suppressors are gonna be smaller, lighter, sometimes cheaper, and they'll outperform 30 cal suppressors on a 5.56. What we did find out is there's yet another reason to pick up a 5.56 can over a 308 can if you're going to be shooting more AR-15, M16, M4, whatever. We saw that that metered about four decibels less than this, but general um, audiologist consensus is it takes four to six decibels for someone to start maybe noticing. But then again, the performance difference isn't that drastic and 30 cal suppressors give you the ability to use your can on different rifles and 300 blackout. For this video, I went with the matching Daniel Defense Soundguard suppressor, which had just come out whenever I first started filming this episode and taking this gun to the range. I figured if I'm gonna be going with a Daniel Defense rifle, may as well use the suppressor from the same company and see how it is. The Soundguard, bit of a mixed bag. What I like about the Soundguard, it's hub mount compatible. Hub is a universal type of mounting system where you can swap the mounts to use basically 
any type of mount you want as long as it's hub compatible. It's also a mild flow through type can that does a good job of redirecting gases downrange. And at 750 bucks, it's actually the cheapest 30 cal flow through type can that's out there right now. It's pretty quiet. I pause here for a sound bite. And it has a lifetime warranty from Daniel Defense. On the other hand, it's brand new this year. It's five ounces heavier than the Invincible proven Dead Air Sandman or the Aero Lahar 30, although neither of those suppressors have any flow through properties like this one does. It's cheaper than a Sandman, but it costs almost $200 more than the new Lahar 30. The suppressor market's become so competitive lately that it's hard to keep up with. I'd prefer something smaller and lighter than the Soundguard, but for 750 bucks with a little bit of flow through, it's an option. For the light, I went with a Surefire Scout and a Mod Light Button Combo. The Scout is my favorite light. There's a lot of good light manufacturers out there and a lot of less expensive ones. But I trust Surefire, so they're my go-to. Sling, you guys know the deal already. I'm a big Blue Forest gear guy. Love this BFG Woodland Sling. They've been my go-to ever since Uncle Clint introduced them to me during my first urban rifle course years ago. I've tried a lot of slings out there, and in my personal opinion, nothing really compares, but I know slings are like cigarettes. Everybody's got their brand. Finally, the big ticket item that cost as much as the gun for the LPVO, I'm using the newish Leupold Patrol 6HD. It's a one to six magnification, which is great as a combination of being lightweight enough but precise enough while still offering a 1X option. The Mark III HD 1.5 to 4X, one of my favorite budget optics, air quotes budget, and it's just enough glass for a 223 AR. You could go to 8X, you could go to 10X, but you're probably gonna spend more money. You're probably gonna have more weight on your rifle. If we're talking an urban rifle, what's gonna happen, really? You're probably gonna castle doctrine somebody two or three times in the chest from a hallway's distance anyways. But 4X or 6X, We'll let you reach out to 500 yards without a problem on a man-sized target. The Patrol, really light for what you get. It's just one pound. That's only three ounces heavier than the 1.5 to 4X Mark III HD and a quarter pound lighter than the Voodoo 1 to 6X that I also have. I'm not an optics expert, or as I would say, optistic, but I know enough to say that this might be one of my favorite LPVOs right now, the Patrol is. It's 15 or 1600 bucks, so if you manage to sell, I want to say 10 or 11 pints of blood to the hospital, you will be able to afford one. Just make sure to eat a lot of orange slices afterwards. So now that we got her all dressed up, let's take her to the dance. I haven't mentioned this yet, but I've been running this setup for over a year at the range, so this is actually quite a long-term review. I haven't cleaned it once yet, by the way. After several range sessions, we haven't had one single failure. Got to be over a thousand rounds, but that's just par for the course for Daniel Defense. Now, what about accuracy? I've already done several accuracy tests with Daniel Defense rifles over the years, and with off-the-shelf, non-match ammo, the best groups I've ever gotten have been about one and a quarter inches at 100 yards, which of course is fantastic for an AR-15 with non-match ammunition. Me and Ryan still went out to the range and shot a few groups with this one just to make sure that it was performing up to spec, and we notched one and a half inch, five round groups over and over and over again with 55 grain PMC X-Tac, a good but not that expensive 5.56 defensive round. Yeah, like, just at about 1.5 inches. Another group here, and that's one point, a little over 1.6, 1.5. Okay, damn. So accuracy is pretty good with generic off the shelf. x -Tac is nicer stuff, but you know, it's still PMC. It's not match ammo or anything. It's more defense oriented, 55 grain. Um, I would not call it match ammo, but that's pretty strong at 100 yards. Two critical components in achieving good accuracy at range, trigger and optic. The Patrol, great eye relief, super clear glass. Plus, it's pretty light for what kind of performance you get out of it, but I do have two significant complaints about it. One, I personally hate this fixed return to zero. If your gun's shooting high with the elevation turret at zero like ours was, you'll need tools to reset the zero and you can't do it by hand. Huge pain in the ass, but I realize I've got the patience of a 
seven year old and some people like a fixed return to zero, I guess. So the only rational issue that I had with this optic is the fact that for super bright days, the illumination on the reticle, not really that bright. We would lose a reticle against dark targets on a bright day. On the upside, it's extremely easy to turn this optic on with a push button on the left turret, meaning that if you're gonna use this as kind of a home defense gun, you wanna be able to stash it with the optic on one X, light it up at night. It'll take you about a quarter second to get to the illuminator, even in the dark. Back to the sound guard, which is really a rebadged KGM suppressor. Again, great for not getting gassed out, lower price than a lot of the competition, quiet and using a kind of hybrid flow through technology, not bad. Now, Daniel Defense claims minimal point of aim, point of impact shift, that's their word, minimal, but ours was dropping three inches at 100 yards with some types of ammo. Blue Pulled Patrol is really pissing me off because you have to, it, the zero right now from the factory is way high at 100 yards, and you actually need to remove the turrets with, with Allen keys. You have to remove the turrets to lower it. So uh, we're shooting about six inches high, but you can see that number's kind of cut in half whenever we use the suppressor. These targets right here are equidistant. You shoot at this target, and that's about the center of the group. I mean, that's a, a little more, that's about six and a half inches high. And then here, call it center of the group right there, only three inches high. So it really is, it's cutting that point of aim, point of impact. It's lowering it by half. Interesting. One inch or less, that's considered good. So three is a bit much, especially at just 100 yards, but it's hard to blame the suppressor because there are a lot of different variables. However, weight is one of those variables, and this is a heavy ass suppressor at almost 23 ounces. Accuracy was still great with or without the suppressor, so dispersion wasn't affected, but it did drop groups three inches at 100 yards for us in this setup. So now your question, as we conclude this video, James, how do you really feel about this build? It's like those weird alien broads that Shatner used to bone on Star Trek. The rifle is both green and sexy. The gun looks great. The OD green Magpul furniture matches the deep woods way closer, in my opinion, than FN's attempts to match its own FDE furniture and anodizing. I've got a harder and harder time straying away from Daniel Defense. They're a bit like the Glock of the AR world because you don't need to mess with them out of the box. I don't like screwing with stuff. Yeah, I don't really like the furniture or the trigger all that much, but Daniel Defense has it out of the box where it really counts. Rails and barrels that the government spends more money on than corrupt South American dictators. And I can swap the stock and the trigger for like 150 bucks and the grip if I want to. I'm changing nothing I've done to this rifle itself, and I highly recommend the exact setup on the rifle. I've tried to kill these guns before, even with the ultra lightweight version of this gun with a 10 ounce, 15 inch rail. It took everything we threw at it. This is a rifle I can recommend without reservation. I mean, other than the, the trigger and the furniture, but even those aren't really that bad. But let's talk about accessories, and I'll try to remember to link all of this shit in the description so you can find it yourself. Buy the trigger and furniture you like. Again, I said I like the LaRue, I like the BFG Vickers Sling, I like Magpul, but you do you there too. The Surefire Light setup and the mod buttons also outstanding. Streamlight does a job at making complete rifle light setups for around 150 bucks, including a tape switch. Hop really likes them, even though I can't figure out which ones are made in China and which aren't, or which are made in the US, I don't know. But I'll drop some links to those in the description as well. For suppressors, while the Daniel Defense suppressor was good, I think most people will probably opt to spend another 50 bucks and get a Dead Air Nomad, which is one of my favorite cans, half a pound lighter, and it sounds amazing. Listen to this on my BCM build. Or you could save yourself 200 bucks, get the new Lahar 30 from Aero, which is still five ounces lighter. If you want gas flow for reduced back pressure though, I think the Soundguard is probably your cheapest option for flow through type cans. For the optic, it's pretty clear, huh? <laughs> I love the Leupold 6 HD Patrol. If it were a couple hundred bucks cheaper and it had like a slightly brighter illuminator, it would possibly be perfect. However, if I'm shopping on a budget, 
Again, Mark III HD 1.5 to 4X. It's only 12 ounces light. It's clear, it's easy to use. $600 MSRP with an illuminator, 500 without. I was making hits on man-sized targets 500 yards away at the Adam Brown range at Thunder Ranch using a borrowed 16 inch stock entry-level Smith & Wesson with a factory trigger and a Mark III HD the last time I was out there. If you need the extra magnification and you wanna save some money, I think the Trigicon Credo Credo, whatever, is a good option. 200 bucks cheaper, but two ounces heavier. The Voodoo 1 to 6, it's excellent, and it's $500 cheaper than the Patrol. However, again, it's about a quarter pound heavier. Now, I've really been loving the new Japanese-made Primary Arms PLX 1 to 8, which gives you an extra hole two X's of magnification while being 100 bucks cheaper than the Patrol and only an ounce heavier. So all of those really good option. So let's get a total real quick on my build. MSRP only. $2,100 for the rifle, $1,600 for the optic, $750 for the suppressor, $369 for the light, $90 for the trigger, $80 for the mod light button, $75 for furniture, $70 for the sling. That's $5,134 MSRP. Now if you want like 90% of the performance for 68% of the price, I'd recommend getting the DDM4 V7 like we got. LaRue Trigger, get the Blue Force Gear Sling, spend 150 bucks on maybe like a Streamlight Rifle Light, and get the $600 Mark III HD. Pick up a Yankee Hill machine or a Lahar 30K for like 500 bucks from Silencer Shop, and you're at 3,500 bucks for an awesome rig. If you were me, what would you have done differently about the rifle, smartass? Let me know in the comments because we've got another entry in this series coming up soon, and I'd love to integrate your feedback. Some of the stuff was T&E, some of the stuff I bought out of pocket, but you guys know that we do not accept money in exchange for positive reviews. We need your support. Support us on Utreon, Patreon, subscribe star player or player or whatever the hell it is, and you could possibly win one of six $250 Top Gun Supply gift certificates that we give away every single month to our supporters at the $5 level or higher. Check the rules below, but we're just glad you're watching. Thank you so much. Take care.